Hi, I'm Paul Germain. Welcome to another session of Smart Boating. You know, we cover a variety of topics on this show, and uh, but one of the most fun ones is when we go in the, to the summer events, and we're at a summer event today. We're in Meredith, New Hampshire, at the 40th Annual Antique and Classic Boat Show, and uh, just a lot of neat boats here, and, and joining us to give us just a brief overview on it is Dennis Shower. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and, and uh, glad to have you here. Thank you. What a terrific day. We got everything except the watermelon. Oh, okay. But, All right. uh, <laughs> but we do have a terrific view of boats, a lot of selections to look at, mm -hmm. uh, everything from canoes to cruisers. Uh, we have reproductions uh, made by two different uh, major manufacturers. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's just uh, some awfully nice stuff. We've got a rare, rare Canadian boat here, a launch. Uh, it's very exciting. We've even got some people here from St. Louis that made the effort just to come to our show. Neat, neat. And this is all, this is all under the umbrella of ACBS, right? It is, it is. The New England chapter of which I'm president is uh, the uh, second oldest chapter in the country. And it's such a popular hobby now that there's over 50 different chapters around the country. Wow. Uh, and we have a, an awful large uh, uh, group of antique boats up here. We have well over 125 boats on the lake. And of course, this is the fifth largest lake in the country. So it's a, it's a terrific uh, place for antique boaters. Great place for it, yeah. 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 Well, well, thank you for that overview. We're going to interview some of these boat owners today, and I think we're going to show them some really interesting boats. I'm glad you will. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Dennis. You Tom, uh, this is an interesting boat that you brought to the show today. I guess this is a Garwood. Can, can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it was built in uh, 1937. Uh -huh. It's a uh, custom utility. It uh, represents a shift from the runabouts, like that 28 over there, to to more of an open boat. Okay. Uh, 24 feet long, and it it's. Uh, Popularity was because it had the opening seating configuration. All right, yeah. They yeah. built Garwoods from uh, 1922 to 1947. Okay. And then we started building them again in 1986. All right. And they were known for being very high performance wood boats, weren't they? They were. Yeah. Garwood set the world speed record in 1931 at 121 miles an hour. Well, Tom, we're looking at the interior and the dash of this boat. Uh, can you tell us a little bit what made it unique? Well, the uh, seating configuration is one thing. Uh -huh. uh, rather than having the seats where you had to step over the different cockpits, this was an op a totally open boat. Yeah. Uh, also, because it was a deluxe utility, that lower th those lower cabinets are re ice boxes. Okay. Uh, and then you had magazine racks and a robe rail, which was kind of cool in a in a utility for the mid-30s. That is cool. And then this dash here, it's got an old style steering wheel and, and an instrument that looks like it might have multiple functions. That's a, there's, there's five functions going on in that. There's a, a tachometer, there's temp, there's amps, uh, there's fuel, uh, and there's oil pressure. Ah. So it's a, it was a typical gauge at the time for a Garwood, okay. and it was ma made to be an integral part of the dash. Uh -huh. Also, the banjo wheel was a, a popular uh, feature in the 30s, mm -hmm. uh, style-wise an improvement from the 20s where they had just the four-spoke rubber wheels. Oh yeah. Now if we pan the cockpit here a little bit, now we got the engine engine box in here. What sort of power was this originally powered with? This has a, its original engine, it has a, a Chrysler Majestic, which is a straight eight, uh, 150 horsepower motor. Well, this is a really pretty boat, owned by uh, Dick. Uh, Dick, can you tell us a little bit about your boat? Uh, it's a 1930 Garwood triple cockpit. Uh huh. Um, I bought it off Lake Sunapee in 1971, so I've had it for 42 years. Wow. And uh, it's part of the family. Yeah. What can I say? And uh, we love it. Yeah. Now, was this restored recently, Dick? Uh, in 1989. 1989. So yeah. we're looking at a 20 plus year restoration. Well, what did they do in terms of restoration? Do you remember some of the major pieces? Uh, a lot. A lot, <laughs> yeah. Decks and a lot of bottom and you know, it got fixed. Well Dick, we're uh, looking into the engine compartment. Uh, what do you got in here? That's a Scripps, mm -hmm. a dedicated marine engine. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 678 cubic inch, uh -huh. six cylinder, double spark. 
Um, 225 horsepower. Wow, that's tons a lot of horsepower. Of, tons of torque. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. What kind of performance do you get out of the boat? Uh, uh, more than I need. Yeah, so 20 knots, 25 knots? It'll go about 40 miles an hour if oh, I want it to. 40 miles an hour, yeah. But most of the time I spend it about 20. Oh, yeah. Because it's very comfy. Yeah. Well, here's another interesting boat at the uh, New Hampshire show brought to us by uh, Mark Mason. Mark, uh, really pretty boat here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? The name of the boat is Sultana. Uh-huh. The name Sultana is an Arabic word, I guess. It means the lady sultan or the sultan's lady. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, it's a 30-foot John Hacker design from mm -hmm. 1930. Um, I rode in a 30-foot Hacker when I was 12 years old and fell in love with with uh, the 30-foot Hacker as probably the most seaworthy of all the big runabouts. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, owned one for 20 years and sold it to Alan Jackson, a country western yeah. guy. Yeah. And wound up building this uh, as a replacement. It's an exact copy. And um, we've had it on the St. John's River in Florida and the Thousand Islands, St. Lawrence River up in Muskoka Lakes. We've had it on Michigan, run uh, the Great Lakes with it. and. Uh, Really a fabulous boat for uh, heavy seas, and and uh, my wife loves it, and uh, yeah, it's, it's our favorite boat. It's a pretty boat. What's the construction, Mark? It's a uh, modern construction. It's vacuum bag, coal molded construction, triple planks, or laminated hull. Yeah. yeah. And uh, genuine leather upholstery, and I tried to build into it all the antique instruments and all the features that. Uh, that set it apart from uh, from other boats yeah, and uh, very, very authentic. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I have uh, three instrument panels. There's yeah, a clock, clock here, and there's an instrument panel in the back for my mother-in-law to tell me when I'm going too fast. And uh, oh. and people ask me why I have three instrument panels, and I tell them it's because I couldn't find a place for a fourth instrument panel. Okay, you like instrument panels. I like dials. Yeah, dials. And yeah, switches yeah. and yeah. such things. So. Well, speaking of dials, you've got another boat just across the way over here that probably has some pretty uh, detailed instrumentation too, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, that's Imshi. Yeah. And Imshi is, uh, an, believe it or not, another Arabic word, uh, Egyptian word, I think, and it means step on it. Okay. Or, or uh, skedaddle. Yeah. Or get the hell out. Right, right. And uh, it's a ho copy of Horace Dodge's 1925 Gold Cup boat. Yeah. And uh, I was looking for the original boat for many years and finally found that it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And along the, along the way, I found the original plans. And oh, yeah. so uh, I uh, built that, and it's my, my gentleman's racer. And uh, a very boat. special boat. What kind of power in that, Mark? Well, it's interesting. The original boat uh, was powered with a Packard airplane engine. Yep. Uh, and then after that, it was powered with a 24-cylinder Duesenberg. Mm -hmm. made out of three Indianapolis uh, uh, straight eight engines. Mm -hmm. And then it was powered with a 16-cylinder supercharged Miller yeah. of Harry Miller Indianapolis fame. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, so this engine is a 600 cubic inch Chevy, uh, and it pushes the boat to the same speeds that the original did. So wow. it's, uh, That's impressive. I've always been working on antique engines yeah. for customers, and uh, I decided that I wanted a modern engine in my boat, so. Yeah, that's a great boat. This is an interesting boat. And it's owned by Steve Gold. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about your boat? Uh, this is, um, oh, I want to know, the 15th or 16th boat that I've built. The inspiration came from the steering wheel. Uh -huh. A friend of mine uh, is a movie producer. He oh, yeah. found the steering wheel in a boathouse in Lake George okay. about 15 years ago. Yeah. And he gave it to me, uh -huh. and it just seemed like it should have a boat around it. Yeah, so I spent a lot of years looking at a lot of different designs, uh -huh. and chose this this design. Yeah. It took me about three and a half years to build the boat, uh -huh. and now the steering wheel has been uh, uh, repos rep yeah, repurposed. <laughs> yes. Now, what is the design of this boat, Steve? Uh, it's it's called Miss Chris, and the designer intended that it's a uh, it, that it's reminiscent of a 30s style runabout. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Craft built one called an Upswept, and this is 26 foot. 
okay. Uh, triple cockpit. Yeah. Um, what sort of beam on it? Look at the beam? Yeah. It's seven foot. Seven foot. Triple cockpit, yeah. Yeah. And were these popular during a certain uh, Certainly period? during the 30s, mm -hmm. yeah. Looking around, you see them from the 30s, 40s. Mm -hmm. Hackers, Garwoods, yeah. yeah. lots of others, and Chris Crafts as well, of course. Yeah. What kind of power, Steve? It's um, a 350 cubic inch, 315 horsepower, fuel-injected Merc Cruiser. Okay. Uh, pushes it at speeds right around 40 miles an hour, which is about as fast as you really want to go on the water. Sure, so. sure, and that's, that's reliable power. This is the sort yeah, of boat oh, you can is. use every very, day, isn't it? Very reliable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that one of the reasons you chose to have it built, a boat that just brought you back to that period but you could use on a daily basis? Um, pretty much so, and it's it's cold molded construction so that oh, you've got is. a very strong boat, yeah. it's relatively light, yeah. it's trouble free, uh, there's dust in the bilges, you know, you don't need to wait for it to swell up or anything. Right. Uh, there's never had a drop of water in the in the boat. And what's the name on it here, uh, Steve? Baghira. Baghira. If you remember Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Books, uh -huh. Baghira was the Black Panther in the oh, Jungle Books. That's right. And it was almost a blue-black, really deep, deep blue-black. Yes. So just like this boat. <laughs> Pardon? Just like this boat. Just like this boat. Well, here's an interesting old boat at the... Uh, at the show, and it's owned by John Hendricks. Hi, John. Hello. John, uh, is there some history behind this boat? Uh, this was my grandfather's boat. Uh huh. He bought it in 1959 for $800. What kind of boat is it? It's a Lyman, 17 foot. Lyman, 17 foot, yeah. And it's a 1959 50 horse Johnson. Okay, okay. So you've had this really it's the entire period of its life, huh? Yep, my family's had it the whole time. Wow. Uh, my uncle had it maybe for eight years for fishing, and then I got it. Oh yeah. Now, has it always been kept in this kind of shape? It's a beautiful no, shape. No, my br I, in '82 I gave it to my brother, and he left it outside for 16 years, oh, and I my didn't God. know it. Yeah. When I found out, I went and grabbed it and then uh, restored it. Oh yeah. Wow, you did a great job. How long did it take to restore it? Two years. Two years. Yeah. And uh, you did have to put some new ribs or planking or that sort of no thing? No planking, no ribs, uh, a new uh, deck and windshield, and a new transom. Oh, yeah. Okay. But that was it, huh? That was it. Yeah. And how's this motor run? That's, that's a real antique in itself. Uh, it? I could pull two people water skiing with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't see many of those anymore. No. They only made it for two years. Oh, is that right? 58 and 59. Yeah. Well, it goes well with this boat. I imagine it's a good combination, huh? Yep. Yeah. That's a it's uh, all, you know, original. Well, here's a pretty lineman that uh, the New Hampshire show, uh, one of the many here, because it's uh, the mark that's featured this year. And uh, Charlie, this is your boat, right? Yes, it is. It's a 1955 Lyman utility. Uh -huh. uh, when I first got it, it came from the, from the Great Lakes. Oh, yeah. It was a fishing boat. Uh -huh. The, uh, all the... Uh, Ribs were, uh, they had cut out screening, so the uh, <laughs> smelt or whatever they used for bait yeah. didn't get thrown into the bilge. Oh, okay. It was quite a leak of when we first got her. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. When did you get her? Um, a little more than 10 years ago. About 10 years ago. That I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what were, what were some of the major things you had to do to restore her? Uh, well, I had a... Uh, garbage plank that was missing. Uh -huh. uh, we had to put that in, and uh, the transom and the aft deck needed to be replaced. Oh yeah. And uh, what we did was we repaired that, mm -hmm. varnished it, and yeah. gave it a little different paint job. Okay. Because it's the uh, the color we like. And oh yeah. Decided to. My wife got me those paddles. Oh yeah, I Christmas. see those. Yeah, those are yeah. really something. Yeah. yeah, we added the lime into it, and what's the power in it, Charlie? It's a uh, gray marine. Gray marine. Yeah, yeah. that's and, uh, kind of authentic, right? That was their yeah. power of choice back then, wasn't it? Gray marine. It's the original power. Yeah. And Four cylinder, six cylinder. It's a six cylinder. Six. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of power does that generate? It's a uh, hundred horsepower. Hundred horsepower. Yeah. It's not a lot, but enough to move it along quite nicely. So what are we talking? Uh, Twenty knots somewhere in that neck of the woods? Yeah, serious. Well, let's say twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and it looks like it has the original steering wheel and it's probably a lot of authentic details, huh? Pretty much. Uh, the cushions are from the era as well. Uh, throw cushions are. The, uh, the upholstery is new. Oh, yeah. Boy, that really came out great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're very pleased with it. It's a user boat. Uh -huh. uh, it goes in the water the 1st of April every year. We do a great deal of salmon fishing out of it. Oh, really? Okay. It's a family boat. We use it a lot. Yeah, it's perfect. Well, here's a pretty little boat. It's, a, it's an old Lyman runabout. Uh, and here's the owner. Can you tell us a little bit about your boat? Sure. This is the oldest Lyman in this show. Uh -huh. It's 1934. Lyman 15-foot runabout and what I particularly like about it is the fact that it's it strikes that is its planking is made out of cypress. Oh really? Okay. And that tends to be uh, something that doesn't rot does it? Cypress is very rot resistant isn't it? That's correct. It's yeah. rot resistance, but at least as important for this kind of a lap strike boat, mm -hmm. it does not split easily. Oh, okay. And right. uh, earlier Lyman used mahogany planking, right. and if you look at some of the older Lymans of this era that were planked in mahogany, yeah. they are split along the, na along the clinch nail line, right. Right. and they're very hard to restore and maintain uh, when they are are prone to splitting like that. So yeah. this cypress, cypress has held up very well. That's interesting. How about the deck, uh, that forward deck there? What's oh, that? Oh, that's interesting. That, I think, is, is redwood. Yeah. It's, this, is a, this boat is highly original. The only thing I've had to do to it is to put new rub rails on it because okay. the old rub rails had rotted off. Right. But the deck is original, and I'm pretty sure it's redwood, some kind of cedar, yes, probably redwood. Yes, it's a different color there. It's got the center steering wheel with the cable steering. The cable steering was typical for, for 30 years. You yes. can't put it on new boats anymore. Oh, you can't, okay. Because uh, it's not as reliable as the hydraulic connections. Yeah. And the steering wheel is the right vintage, but I'm told by local expert that it's not exactly right. Oh, I but see. But I got it off eBay, and I'm happy with it because it looks like the right vintage. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What sort of boating do you like to do with this boat? Well, I use it right now. Primary, I'm I'm on the New Hampshire Public Water Access Advisory Board, uh -huh. and I use it to take people of my hometown of Nashua, New Hampshire, take them out on the local rivers, the Nashua River and the Merrimack River, yeah. because most people have never seen their towns from the waterfront. Right, right. And yet these towns like Nashua and Manchester and Lowell were all built because of the rivers. Yeah. So a boat like this that doesn't draw much water has a reliable modern engine on it. I can take people out and show them uh, what their urban environment looks like from from uh, like it used to be 100 years ago. Yeah, that's perfect for that. So that's what I do with this boat. Well, here's some lineman that's in exceptional shape. And here's the owner, Kim. Kim, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. This is a really pretty boat you brought to the uh, show today. Thank can you. you. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's a 1959 Lyman Utility. Uh huh. And we brought it out two weeks ago from Michigan. Yeah. And Charlie's done a little bit of work to it. Has he? What sort of work did he do? Do you know? Um, he's varnish? done some varnish work. Yeah. Cleaned it up a little bit, and here it is. But basically, it was in really good shape, huh? Yes, absolutely. And they call this the utility because the open layout, I guess. Yes. Right? Yeah. Which makes it very flexible. You could fish or ski or whatever you want to do. Right. Yeah. And uh, a lot of little details here, like the ventilation. Uh, Lockers have the little anchors cut right into them, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I guess this would be powered by a variety, could be powered by a variety of engines, but this is a V8, I understand. It yes, it is. Right? Well, this is a beautiful lineman here, and pretty rare boat. Uh, John, you brought this boat today. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I can. It's a 1940 lineman uh, uh -huh. made in Sandusky, Ohio. Uh -huh. And that year they made, this is a 21 foot boat, and okay. that year they made 10 of them. Three of which had the hard top, which makes oh. it a rather unusual boat. Okay, all right. And this was a pre-war boat, right? Yes, it is. And did that had an impact on the planking they used? Well, it did, because uh, pre-war they were able to get mahogany much better than uh, they would today. And so during the Second World War, they perfected uh, a plan to make plywood planks. And that's what they used from the war on. Uh, mostly, and this happens to be one pre-war, so it's solid mahogany planking. In fact, it has white oak, uh, white oak framing, and other than that, it's solid mahogany virtually everywhere. Wow, that's a lot of mahogany. Now, 
As I is. focus in on the instrument panel here, John, how much of that is original? It's all original. Is it really? Yep. Yeah. Everything on the boat you see is original, uh, as far as I can tell. It, I have a copy of the uh, options that were available when it was bought, uh -huh. and uh, I think everything here is original on the boat, as near as I can tell. Now, was this owned for some length of time by uh, maybe one family or two families? Yes, in 1940, uh, Mr. Dodd uh, bought it at the New York City Boat Show. Okay. And he had it, uh, in fact, I have the original bill of sale. Oh, you do? And, yeah, the original bill, he bought that this boat for $2,000, delivered to Lake Winnipesaukee. Uh-huh. And it was uh, shipped by rail to uh, Lakeport, New Hampshire, probably down near where Irwin Marine is now. Yeah. And it was... Uh, I put in the lake at that time, and it never left that lake until I bought it three years ago, and I brought it out of town one winter to do some work on it. So mm -hmm. in all that time, 70 years, it stayed right here on Winnipesaukee, always housed at uh, Bear Island, where oh it is today. Boy, that's why it's in such great shape, huh? Yeah, it is. It, it, yeah. Well, the boathouse is the big thing. It, yeah, yeah. The yeah. boathouse makes all the difference in the world. What sort of power, John, in the boat like this? It's got a gray, uh, what they call a gray marine engine, a gray Phantom, uh -huh. which is a straight six. Okay. And uh, it's a six cylinder, 125 horsepower. 125. And what sort of performance does that uh, cause for the boat? Well, it, it was never made for top speed, but it, it could go, they, they advertise it as going between 25 and 30 miles an hour. I expect uh, if the engine were rebuilt another time, it could probably go 25 miles an hour. It, yeah. uh, goes just over 20 now, so. Yeah. Any it's, idea behind the story on the name there, John? Mary Lou? Well, Mary Lou uh, was 16 years old uh, when her father bought this. Uh, oh, she okay. was, uh, a, her name was Mary Lou Dodd, and she was 16 years old, and she and her twin brother were waiting for it at Bear Island, and they got it, and she passed away last year at 88, and oh. uh, she basically owned, was with that boat all her life. Oh, that's amazing. From 16 to, to well into her 80s. And then after I bought it, I kept her involved with the restoration and uh, everything about it. So it, it seemed fitting to name the boat after her, Mary yeah, Lou. So, well, here's just a gorgeous lineman uh, at the show today. Thank filmed you. by Bill Meehan. Bill, how are you? Thank you, Paul. Very well. Bill. And having uh, a great can, day. Yeah, yeah. It's just a beautiful day for a boat show. It you is. Tell us a little bit about your boat, like uh, the make and the... This is a plane. Lyman 1969. It's an offshore, which you, you see is different than the other Lymans in that it has a raised deck and a sleeping area underneath oh, and okay. a little uh, area for a toilet. Right. It was made in 1969. Um, these Lymans were made in Sandusky, Ohio. Mm -hmm. When I was a boy, uh, this was the boat I wanted, but obviously couldn't have. Oh, right. um, but as we age and maybe end our careers and we have a little bit of money, we can have things we thought we wanted. <laughs> yes. I wanted this specific boat, really? and I found this specific boat. I advertised through the Lyman Journal mm -hmm. for this boat. I found it in uh, Lake Ponderiel, Idaho, which is 70 miles north of Coeur d'Alene. Oh. I went out there, I loved the boat, I bought it and had it hauled back to New England. Mm -hmm. On the West Coast, you don't see a lot of Lymans because they're made in Sandusky, Ohio, and they're right. Great Lakes boats. Right. Uh, I didn't do enough research or wasn't skilled enough to pick out the fact that it wasn't in great shape. Oh, okay. And when I brought it back, I had to take it to a Lyman restorer mm -hmm. named Chris Cushman in northern Maine mm -hmm. who replaced the bottom of the boat for me. Okay. Last week, the engine went, and I had to replace the engine. Oh, all but right. Piece by piece, I'm getting the boat to an area where I can enjoy it and have confidence in it. And I just love the boat. I love the style of it. I love the appearance of it. I love the fact that it's wood. Yes. And that's what this uh, entire show is about. Yes, and what you've got a name on on the transom here. Is there any significance behind that, Bill? There is. I, I'm an orthodontist, and uh -huh. I deal with misaligned teeth. Okay. <laughs> so so the boat is named Misaligned. Well, Dennis. We've just had a great time at the show here today. It's been beautiful weather up here in Meredith, and we've seen a great variety of boats, uh, Chris Crafts and Lymans and Garwoods, the whole gamut, and really, really fun. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up the show today? Well, just to thank everybody that's been here. We, we're excited to have had a full house of over 80 boats, mm -hmm. and in particular, we'd like to thank you for coming here and sharing this with uh, your viewing audience. 
And really, if there's anybody out there that has an interest and wants to pursue this further, they, they, we'd love to have them become a member. And they can do that through our website, NECACBS, or the acbs.org uh, website, which is the national headquarters. Right. So okay. thank you. You're welcome. Dennis, thank you. All right, you're welcome. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for joining us. I hope you'll come back again soon.